Hello crafty friends, I'm back for another episode. Today I have the finished object, some amegurumi and some nighthawk swatching to talk about. I hope you'll enjoy it. Hello and welcome to the podcast. This is episode 26 of Hanging On By A Thread. My name is Silje and this is the space I use to talk about the nitty things and crafty things I do in a week. So welcome, I'm really glad you're here. I did have an unintentionally long break before this episode. Um, it is now July 18th. It's a Sunday and I finally have some time to sit down and record. And yeah, the summer holidays have officially started in Norway. Uh, a lot of people are around traveling. There's a lot of um, local tourism, I guess you could say, nowadays. And I am at home with both the kids and my partner's working. So there's not really a lot of free time for me to just uh, sit down and, and chat to a camera because the five-year-old does not nap. <laughs> but now it's a Sunday and nobody's working. So I gave the order to, you know, you watch the kids and want to record something because I can't le leave it another two years before I sit down and record again. So hello, welcome. Thank you for zooming in again. And if it's your first time, then you know, fantastic. I hope you enjoy this. If you've tuned in to my channel before, you might have seen this on my needles. It is a finished object that I am wearing today. It is summer, but since it's gray and about 10 degrees outside Celsius, it's completely appropriate. I finally, 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 after two and a half years on the needles, finished my lapwing pullover. Yay! <laughs> I think it looks great. It fits exactly the way I hoped it would. As you can see, it is reaching my hips and um, well it turned out pretty nice in the blocking I did just go at it with like a wet towel and an ironing board and I didn't wet block it completely yet but it evened out nicely and I am happy with the way it fits the seams are relatively neat and um, yeah, very happy with this. I sat down to record this a couple of weeks ago, but the the recording just it was it was terrible. So I tried it again today and let's hope this is better. As you can see, I am very pleased with the 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 lap wing. It was very much worth it, I think. And of course, I wasn't. It didn't take me two and a half years to actually knit it. It's been in hibernation multiple times, and but yeah, in the end, it's very, very toasty and like. I think I, I might unravel a bit on top and try to do a stretchier bind off on the neckband which is quite close to my neck anyways. I would like it to be more open, but I think I'm okay with this. It'll be good to have the chest area covered in winter. So yeah, this is a Blue Face Lester fingering weight yarn. It's a one of a kind colorway hand dye by Nina Petrina. And the, 
the contrasting color is um, it's called Brent Jor. It's from it's Telespin Simre, which is a two ply um, mohair uh, yarn. So the Simre, I believe, is from the it's is it from the adult goat? I'm not sure. I'm sure there's information on that on uh, Telespin's uh, website. So I tried to go local with this uh, as far as sourcing the yarns. So I think it turned out very well. I'm so pleased with this. It looks, I'm just staring at myself in the little camera thing and admiring it. But yeah, besides fastening a ton of tre threads, on the inside. I posted a photo of the, um, the inside of this on my Instagram, um, Silmoa at, uh, on Instagram, if you want to follow me there. I am a very inconsistent poster, but every now and then I do post a photo of progress and finished stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did post a, a photo of the, the inside of this uh, cardigan. A cardigan? What do I say? Inside of this pullover when I was fasting um, the threads. And uh, I've knit this in the round. Um, and made sticks for the armholes. So I, at, on that photo you can see um, how I knitted a bit of cover to lay over the the stick so that that is neater and uh, less bulky. You can see there's a bit of bulk here so I could have done a better job on that or had a bit more room. I'm also glad that I I increased the the length of the opening because I had it up to here and that would have been not enough. Now it's just long enough for um, a modified uh, drop shoulder. Yeah. So as you can see that it starts quite high up on my upper arm. <sighs> Lovely, guys. I think I might be one of those few people that don't fully appreciate summer or more specific i like summer i love the weather and all these things i don't particularly like the summer holidays it's always been kind of a negative feeling with me the summer holidays uh, yeah because everybody you know whooshes off some place and doing things and having a gay old time and I don't feel like I ever did that. I'm very poor at, at vacation planning and traveling and didn't learn how to do that properly. So I always end up feeling slightly abandoned in summer. <laughs> but um, mm. trying to fix that. There's always so much stuff to work on uh, with oneself. So <sighs> yeah, that's another thing. So to keep myself busy while watching kids, I'm picking up and knitting and I have three projects ongoing right now that I'm actively knitting on. One is an amigurumi project. The second one, which I'm going to show uh, in a minute, and the second one, of course, is I'm still swatching for the Nighthawk slipover. And I have joined in on the test it of an uh, oversized cardigan and DK weight. So I can't show that, <laughs> which sucks, but I think it will be good. And when the test knit is over and you got the green light to show it off, I will do so. Um, because if you've watched this podcast before, you know I've been on about wanting and needing. Um, a cozy cardigan to wear around the house with pockets. So pockets, check. Shawl collar, check. Uh, belt, check. Uh, you know, 
long and cozy and DK weight. And it uh, worked out beautifully with uh, some of the holst garn that I had purchased. So I'll show you that in another episode. But for now, you'll have to make do with admiring this lapwing sweater. And I'll show you perhaps the amigurumi first. Yes? So, ah, this is also a new acquisition. Look at this pretty. I, I'm not much for, I don't have a lot of like um, project bags and stuff. I do want, but I just haven't gotten around to making or anything. But uh, pink hazel bags, they are gorgeous. And she was doing this new yarn bowl thing. And look at this pretty bag. It's got moths on it. And that is so gorgeous. And the colors are so pretty. And it is truly very convenient. So it opens up like that and the inside fabric is this lovely orange. So I'm having this as my, kind of my amigurumi bowl because it's cheerful and has a cheerful project inside. So I am making Dirk the Dragon by, can I remember that? No, I have to look at the thing. Uh, by Lali Lala, I'll put the name there. And he has now a body. Um, I still have to finish the head and the hood, but the head will be stuffed and come on to here. And he will, I think I have to go here, you can see. So the, bo oh, I was showing you his little butt. This is the front, so he has a little bit of a pot belly going on. He's got very cute feet. And this is, the pattern is showing it very nice. Like, I really love the pattern. Uh, it just turns out so well. Like the shape of this thing is just perfect. So it's really easy to follow. And I worked up this quite quick, quicker than I thought, actually. So I should get on this and, and finish. I have a few more decreases here, just a couple of rounds. And then I need to um, finish the head because I'd run out of this beige for his face. So I'm just gonna continue in the blue for the decreases there so I can join these two together all around here I would think and then the hat comes on top and then I guess there is arms and a little tail and then some trim on it. I'm planning to use these um, these two colors as contrast. Although right now I am mulling over whether to do like the, the spikes of his dragoniness uh, in a nice little green I have because the blue and the green could be quite sweet. It's a children's toy after all. So it doesn't need to be like pretty in the sense of, yeah, aesthetically pleasing for an adult. It should just be cute, I think. So we'll see. Maybe I'll change the, the spikes to a acidy green. I think that could be cool with the, the body. But that, that's coming along, uh, coming along nicely. I have stuffed it firmly, as they say. I don't feel like I have a good hang of the, the level of stuffing these semigurumis need, but it's getting there. So I'm, I'm doing this kind of uh, 
uh, participation to the Amagurumi, Yerlong Amagurumi long <laughs> by um, uh, the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast, which is a podcast I tend to, I've been watching for a long time. And uh, it's very cozy and she makes a lot of, um, lots of amigurumi. And yeah, got me onto that. That was Dirk the Dragon by Lali Lala. And hopefully it will be done in not so long. I have this project of, uh, uh, I've already made uh, two gifts or two gift and I haven't sent them off yet I'm a Rumi uh, dolls I got the sheep and the bunny and they're both going to little baby girls that <laughs> have already been born a while ago now um, and I haven't sent them because they also have big brothers both of these little girls so I figure Maybe the little the, the big brothers also should have a yeah you got a sister gift. <laughs> so I am trying to make some more of a grimace for gifting. So my next whip is for the feral feral vest cal, is that what we're calling it? Yes. I have finally, finally finished swatching. Or I'm pleased with the color swatch for the Nighthawk slipover, which is this one. That's the one I'm going to be casting on. I was struggling, so I have swatches. And I'm not swatching really to get a gauge swatch. I am doing swatches to see, test out colorways. It's a lot more satisfying, a lot more fun than just seeing what needle size I need to use, which, of course, it's handy for checking that as well. I got gauge, as expected, and I've got uh, 30 stitches by 34 rows on 3 millimeter needles. The pattern calls for 2.5, so that's pretty usual for me. I, I, I hold my yarn with quite a lot of tension when I'm knitting, so it does... Uh, affect my gauge and I need to usually go up uh, a needle size. So my first swatch was this. I I think I showed uh, last episode that I was like um, trying out colorways on the computer first and I tried to do some things and no matter what you do it doesn't show accurately so I this is my first sample. And okay, yeah, sure, that can work. I don't hate it, but it's, mm, it's off. It's not exactly what I'm wanting for this colorway. So I have uh, this one is, this is all Roma Finul uh, yarns that I had in stash. I was trying to stick with what I have in stash and stuff that I have enough quantities of. So this one is like a biscuity beige and the natural white, um, a steel gray and a kind of a dark gray. There is a dark camel and a burnt orange going on here. And it's just a little bit confused, the colorway. And yeah, it's just not as beautiful as the original colorway that's shown in the pattern that Wilma Malcolmson has come up with. And you know, she's a pro, so. Um, Next up I thought, well, if I can't make it work with these light colors, maybe I should go darker. And I started with this. This has not been washed. This has been washed in a drapey stitch gate. Bang on. So I knit another swatch. Um, FYI, I knitted my samples like a little sock tube and then I cut them up. 
because I like to see the pattern bigger. I could leave it just as a tube, but I like to see the pattern. Um, and then I thought, oh, I need some more dark colors. I picked the dark gray with a medium gray and the light gray and started off like this. And the white, that was like, okay, the white is not working. Let's try something different. And <laughs> then because of how the background colors are swapped in the pattern, that just, I wanted it to be kind of a gradient because that's how it is, but this gray is too light and that red is too dark. And anyway, I ended up with just kind of having mid mid tone grays and trying to contrast them with mid tone yellow and and red and stuff so it's like the, i like all the colors it's just not no this is all wrong <laughs> so i decided to i wanted neutrals for this neutrals for this vest and i was going for light because I'm going a bit out of my comfort zone, I tend to go with with just dark uh, colors for my neutrals. <sighs> but this isn't working, and I couldn't be bothered knitting another sample in the dark colors. But actually, I I'm enjoying knitting color samples, so I might do a couple of more swatches to see with some color versions because I ended up with a, a white and light gray colorway with gold contrasts that I really like. So this is what I've been, I'm going to be casting on, I'm pretty sure. See, I have not washed this. It will bloom and fluff out and look as even and nice as the beige uh, sample in the end. If you can see this, I'm peeling in to see it. So here I have um, the colorways for the background colors are uh, all Roma Finer. So there is a, a natural white, a light gray and light. <laughs> very light gray and a light gray and then i have uh, the contrast colors are all uh, uh, jameson so shetland spindrift i've got got burnt umber uh, yellow ochre i think and autumn which blends the autumn colorway blends beautifully from the yellow to the burnt umber you can hardly see but it's a green that's just gorgeous and the subtle color difference in the natural white and the light light gray marled so there is a slight shading on the background here you can't hardly tell so I'm pleased with this. I think this will become a beautiful light vest. Um, I am tempted to make, try to make a colorway that I like with um, green backgrounds, but like really green, not a subtle green like this, but maybe yeah, really deep and saturated greens. And kind of like the green version of the Nighthawk colorway, which is uh, this teal blue, right? So you got this dark saturated teal. I want to do that, but with a green. That could be lovely. So I will keep swatching just because it's fun to play with the colorways. And, uh, and not waste a bunch of time uh, casting on all stitches. And yeah, that's satisfying. It's an evening of knitting. 
As you can see, I, I need a fairly large sample, so it's enough for to get a good impression of the color and um, a gauge sample at the same time. Because I'm letting it around. So in the back side, it looks like this. This is gonna be my Nighthawk slipover. Um, yeah. <laughs> These are my colors. As you can see, the greys are very subtle from white, so they, they blend really nicely. And my contrast colors is this trio obviously this is this is not enough <laughs> and i have already ordered um these two of uh jameson's uh website and i'm waiting for this one to come in stock this is the burnt umber um if it doesn't come doesn't become available in stock i think i can get away with using the dark ca camel color from um, from Roma which is the the brown here as you can see that's a pretty good match for the burnt umber the difference is the Roma faded one it's just really solid color and I am I am a sucker for the heathered colors of Jameson's spin drift. And I mean, come on. <sighs> Autumn. This green is just alive, isn't it? And it picks up the the yellows and the orange from from the other two colorways so beautifully because it has been heathered with those colors in it. I'm pretty sure definitely the yellow is you has been used to create this color. And uh, the um, this might be ideal to use with the green version as well as a base color because the the, the blue color in the original Nighthawk is the one that's called Rosewood and it's also kind of like one of these really uh, busy, oily mixes that has a lot of other colors in them so that they pick up uh, if you hold it. So this one I could hold it with a brown and it would pick up all the browns and it would look browner. Uh, if I pick it up one of the greens, it will look greener. So if I put it with the yellows, it kind of, like I think I tried to contrast these ones and it was impossible. They looked like the same color once the stitches were together. And same here, that's where you get this smooth transition. So the green, it it's melding into the yellow as well as the ochre but they are clearly different colors so fun times yes yeah, i've been playing with this so i just kind of finished my sample this morning and i was like yes finally i have something i'm happy to cast on i can show it off to people to the podcast and uh, get knitting um yeah i've ordered the yarn from jameson's of shetland um to make it worth the postage i added a few extra balls obviously of one of those magnificent greens they have so let's see guys i'll i'll have to show off the purchase next time yeah <laughs> that's it for me today I hope you enjoyed the podcast episode. Um, 
As always, notes for the stuff I've talked about will be in the description box below. I've added chapters and goodies if you need to... yeah. Um, if you made it so far into the episode, please do hit subscribe. It's uh, really fun to see that number growing on my channel. So yeah, until next time. Bye.